and met and befriended in many different areas of conflict. And uh, these are their voices. They range from a woman of 107 who experienced the First World War to girls of 19 who are still dealing with the ravages of war in the Congo. I am Tamara from Anatolia. I am 107 years old. When I was a little girl, my family escaped the genocide of our Armenian people. And we fled and came here to Jerusalem, the Holy Land, where our community has preserved our sites for thousands of years. Ninety-nine years have passed, but my eyes still weep at all I see happening around me. This is what I have learned from my past. This is my message to you all for the future. May the victim not become the perpetrator. May the victor not become the oppressor. May history never repeat itself again. Nine years old, but I never miss my evening walk. How else would I meet all my friends and tell my stories? 1939, that is the year that Hitler invaded my fatherland, Prague, and tried to exterminate all us Jews. For months, we hid here and there until one day we got safe passage. And we climbed on the boat, and we sailed and sailed across the oceans, and arrived here in Ecuador. My body survived, but not my heart. Slowly, I died of grief, almost. But then, at the age of 50, I found my true purpose. And I started a new life. I became a professor of psychology and a therapist. Even now, they all come to me for advice of how to unmoot all the dramas of their lives. Peasants, poets, philosophers, politicians, even presidents. My teaching Todo obscuridad contiene un punto de luz. All darkness, all suffering contains a point of light. Don't hold on to the past. It takes you in vicious cycles with no escape. Your power does not lie in controlling others and controlling the future. Your power lies in yourself. Give up the past and future. Live the present moment. That is the most important. Live in harmony with the earth. Come tomorrow again, huh? <laughs>
I am Deka from Somalia, from the Bajir region in uh, Kenya. I am a Somali. You know, we Somali women, we found a way to negotiate peace with our men, breaking with our traditions, because we had to speak out against the war. Do you want to know how we did it? For many days and weeks, talked amongst ourselves, all the village women. Then we called the Shura Council and we gave them our three conditions. We said, number one, our men must no longer bring their guns into the home and into the marketplace. Number two, you must negotiate with the other clans, dialogue with them. must accept us women as part of the Shura Council and make all decisions together with us. We told them, you reflect on our conditions, but if you don't agree, there will be consequences. All the women will go on strike <laughs> in the field, in the pastures, in the marketplace and in the bed. It worked. <laughs> now, with Bajir Peace and Development Community, we are able to prevent conflicts all over the Somali region and even further. My vision for the future is that men and women must dialogue together as equals. Then true peace can be built.
I am Noura from Syria. We are all peace activists. We all had to flee from Syria when they imprisoned us, tortured us, and tried to destroy us. Yes, now we are refugees. We are scattered across Jordan, across Turkey, and across Lebanon. But do you think that has stopped us? Not at all. We still communicate with each other. We work day and night to plan for peace. We find ways to collect humanitarian supplies and can take them into Syria. Yet our people are being killed like flies. 200,000. Killed by the regime and by those extremists who hijacked our peaceful revolution. <coughs> but we haven't given up. We know the future belongs to us. We young people will go back to Syria and we will build a future of justice, of dignity, and of freedom for all people. years of peace. 